are just about getting ready for the opening coin toss. The Belmont captains making their way out to the middle of the field. Marauders, as we said, 1-3, 0-1 in, in, in Liberty Division play. Uh, last, uh, when we saw the Marauders, of course, they uh, won their opener against Cambridge here at Harris Field by a score of 43-24. Since then, three uh, pretty one-sided losses. Marauders uh, running into some very tough opponents in Wakefield, Tewksbury, and Reading. The Reading team that uh, was 10-1 last year and was competing uh, for a Super Bowl. So you see the Belmont captains out there, uh, Chris Cogliano, Jaden Arno, Asa Rosenmeyer, and Ben William out there for the opening coin toss. Brian McRae, uh, coach of the Marauders, uh, looking for some uh, better results today. And of course, if the past is any indicator, uh, not only are these teams uh, sharing the same record right now, but over their last six meetings, the teams have split the six games evenly. And in fact, the uh, three games that were played here at Harris Field, all decided by a touchdown or less. So uh, we should have a pretty back and forth, exciting ball game here tonight. Two very evenly matched teams. Officials taking their time explaining all the official ground rules. Let's see, it looks like uh, the Winchester High School, formerly the Sachems. I might slip up and do that. I apologize in advance if I do, because I've been calling uh, Middlesex League games for quite some time. And uh, as of last year, they became the Red and Black, uh, changing their uh, official team name. Red and Black actually is a tradition at Winchester that goes back uh, almost a century. I guess that was a former... A uh, team name that they went by before they adopted the uh, Sachem's mascot, which is now no more. So they are the red and black, appropriately. They are dressed in the red and black with the white jerseys and red numerals across. Of course, Marauders wearing their all, uh, what do you call it, color rush, I guess, in the NFL. Uh, it's the uh, high school version of the color rush. Marauders all in maroon, including the helmets with the white numerals splashed uh, on their jerseys. As we said, Winchester uh, won the toss. They are electing to receive to start the ball game. I did not see the officials give an official deferment sign, so I think Winchester did win the toss and receive. I know nowadays everybody likes to defer to the second half. Either way, uh, the Marauders will have uh, will receive the opening kickoff to start the third quarter. As we said, last six meetings between these two teams, they have split them three to three. As we said, very evenly matched ball games, and uh, the games here at Harris Field have been very competitive. Asa, Ro Asa Rosenmeyer, uh, one of the Belmont uh, senior captains, is uh, lining up. And it appears he's going to kick off now. When we were here last, uh, when the Marauders beat uh, the Falcons of Cambridge Ridge and Ladd, and uh, Austin Lasseter, number 20, was the kicker. As I take a quick perusal of the sideline, I do not see him there, nor is he on the field. So my guess is that uh, he is not available this evening. And so Asa Rosenmeyer will kick it away. Line drive taken by the red and black of Winchester and a pretty good return and a big hole up the middle and nearly a touchdown scored there, but a touchdown saving tackle made by number 53, Daniel Martin on the return. That was Ben Wilson, Jr. return man listed as a wide receiver on the Winchester roster. And again, there's where uh, Ace and Rosenmeyer on the kicking, um, you know, kicking that ball off and being the last line of defense on special teams. Rosenmeyer going at 6'4", 315. Doesn't quite have that uh, lateral shiftiness that sometimes a kicker needs when he's the last line of defense on the return. But thankfully, Daniel Martin, sophomore, comes up with a big tackle to uh, stop Wilson from getting into the end zone. Nonetheless, Winchester will start this first drive at the Belmont 39-yard line in great shape. Handoff for a gain of two or three yards goes to, that was a, checking to see who that was. That was number 23 for Winchester. Ryan Doucette, he's a junior. And presumably he's going to, uh, he is their starting running back. Winchester uh, opened the season uh, much like 
Both these teams, uh, as you mentioned, both one and three, and both started the season with a win and have both lost three straight. Here's a throw and a catch made. Uh, it's going to be good for a Winchester first down, late flag, pass caught by number, I think that's number eight. Is that six or eight? Uh, check that, number six, Jack Costello, senior receiver, making the catch on the throw from junior quarterback Jack Centarelli. We have a flag down, and the flag is against the red and black, illegal block in the back, and so they'll be marching this back from the point of the catch and tackle. So it's going to still be a first down on the 10-yard penalty. Uh, first down will... Uh, be spotted there. I believe it's going to be first and 20. First and 10. Well, no, they're saying first and... Yeah, they're spotting the ball at the 31 of Belmont. So really quickly, Winchester uh, opened the season uh, with a 13-6 win at Newton South, and again, like Belmont, has lost their last three, losing 17-6 uh, to Waltham, 28-7 to Masconomen, and then opening Liberty Division play uh, hosted Lexington a week ago and played the Minutemen very tough, but lost uh, seven to six. Meanwhile, here's a uh, center rally, and he's going to be tackled for a loss. Chris Cogliano coming up, big number one. Uh, Cogliano had a great opening week against Cambridge, scoring a couple of uh, touchdowns on receptions from quarterback Jaden Arno. Cogliano uh, also listed as a linebacker on the Marauders roster, and he comes up with a big tackle for no gain. Centarelli was rolling out to the left far side and could not come up with any yardage. So second and 10 for Winchester at the Belmont 31-yard line. Here in the opening moments of the ball game, first drive of the game. Centarelli fires downfield. That's going to be incomplete overthrows Ben Wilson, but center really had to get rid of it quickly. There was a pass rush there. A couple of uh, maroon jerseys were in the area of the Winchester quarterback. So that's going to bring up third down and 10. Last time Belmont and Winchester played here at Harris Field, it would have normally been the fall of 2020, but uh, due to COVID, the 2020 football season was postponed to the spring of 2021, and Belmont lost to Winchester by a score of seven nothing in that ball game. Third down and 10. Centarelli is back in the shotgun. He'll hand off again to Doucette. Doucette goes far side. He'll be close to the first down marker. And I believe he got there. Knocked out of bounds by the Marauders, but not before Doucette gives the red and black a first down. They will move the chains. Ball spotted down at the 20-yard line. So this drive started at the Belmont 40, and Winchester's now picked up a pair of first downs. First and 10 at the 20. Again, the Winchester quarterback is number 16, Jack Centarelli, a junior. He missed all of last season with an elbow injury, and he won the job this year for Wally Dombowski's Winchester Red and Blacks, and we have to set this time coming near side. He'll be tackled by number four, Brian Logan of the Marauders for a gain of about nine yards. So it'll be second and one at the Belmont 11. Crowd starting to fill in here at Harris Field. Second and one on the Belmont 11 yard line. Uh, what is a great night for football, great night for football viewing too. Santorelli is working out of the shotgun. Doucette is behind him in a uh, kind of a RPO formation, and it'll be a handoff to Doucette, who gets inside the Belmont 10-yard line. That'll be good for another Winchester first down, the third first down for the Red and Black on this drive, and it'll set up a first and goal for Wally Dembowski's Winchester football team. 
Dembowski in his 12th season as the head coach of Winchester. All-time record of, of 40 wins, 78 losses. As recently as 2019, uh, Winchester had a 9-2 squad and got to the Division Three North Final, losing on a um, missed two-point conversion. Here's Centarelli on first and goal, and he'll get swarmed by several maroon jerseys for a very short gain. Maybe got about a yard at most. Marauders doing a nice job defensively over there. Asa Rosenmeyer helping to lead the defense, senior captain. Plays on the offensive and defensive lines for Belmont. And actually, as I look on the far side of the field, I see number 20, Austin Lassiter, out there. Unless someone else is wearing his jersey. But uh, I only bring that up because Lassiter was the uh, kicker in week one, but uh, he did not uh, kick the ball off to start the ball game. Here's a pass to the back corner of the end zone, and it is incomplete. Receiver caught the ball, but he could not land in bounds. So it'll go as an incomplete pass, third and goal, coming up for Winchester. Well, as I said, if uh, this game li leaves up to the billing of the last three years, it'll come down to the wire. Some some good games. Uh, as we said, Marauders lost uh, two years ago to Winchester as part of the 2020 official season here at Harrisfield. 7-0 four years ago. Marauders won here at Harris by a score of 17-14. Here's Centarelli on third and goal. He'll throw. It's incomplete. Pressure there once again. Brian Logan, junior wide receiver, slash defensive end. And he slashed in there to get the pressure on the Winchester quarterback. And that's going to bring up fourth and goal at about the eight-yard line. Now, Winchester has a weapon that you don't see that much here at the high school level. And that is they have a very good kicker. He is junior, Kieran Kaur. And Coach Dempowski has claimed he could kick one from 50 yards if he had to. Right now, he's only going to have to kick one from about uh, 23 yards. Centarelli will hold. Kieran Kaur's kick is up, and it's good. So thanks to the, uh, the big kickoff return by Ben Wilson setting up Winchester in Belmont territory to start the drive. The red and black drive about 32 yards, and they score the first points of the game. Seven minutes, 20 seconds to go here in the opening quarter, and it is Winchester 3, Belmont nothing here on BHS Sports TV. Again, we uh, hope you're enjoying the live broadcast. If you are in Belmont, you might be watching us live right now uh, at on uh, Comcast Channel 96 or Verizon Channels 30 or 2130. That's the HD Verizon channel. You can also watch live stream of tonight's football game at belmontmedia.org slash infotv and also streaming live on the Belmont Media YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, search Belmont Media, and click on the link. It'll bring you right there. However you are consuming the game through the Belmont Media Center, we are glad that you are. Thanks for joining us. If you couldn't be here at Harris Field, and again, as we mentioned, it's a beautiful fall evening. Might be the last time temperatures get as warm as uh, they did here this afternoon for uh, quite some time. Temperatures, sunny skies and temperatures in the uh, mid-70s. Karen Kaur is going to boom that kick through the back of the end zone. So it will be a touchdown. Marauders will start the drive first and 10 at their 20-yard line. First offensive series for Jaden Arno and the Belmont Marauders. Arno, a junior. 5'10, 165. Actually had a bit of a growth spurt during uh, the offseason. And in fact, Jaden Arno made his very first varsity start for the Marauders one year ago in Winchester against the red and black and was victorious 
in his first varsity start. Marauders won that game 41 to 14. Here's Adrian Garung coming to the near side, breaking a tackle still on his feet. He's got a first down and quite a bit more. Finally shoved out of bounds at the 45 yard line, but that's gonna be a 25 yard run and a first down for Adrian Garung of the Belmont Marauders, the junior running back picking up where we last saw him in week one against Cambridge when he scored a couple of touchdowns, one of them an 80-yard run. But unfortunately, folks, okay, we're going to have to take that one off the board. Karung may have run for 25 yards, but you didn't see that because unfortunately there was a penalty on the Marauders and it's going to back them up. Holding is the call on someone on the offensive line in all likelihood. And... Trying to figure out why the penalty wasn't assessed. The ball is still at the 20 yard line, first and 10. Okay, I'm not sure why they didn't assess the penalty there. A little confusing, but anyway. Nonetheless, first and 10 once again. Garung this time is bottled up for a very short gain. Number 72, Caden Salvetti makes the tackle. And in fact, it'll be a loss of a yard for Garung. Yeah, so back to that game last year that was played in Winchester. Uh, first career varsity start for Jaden Arno. He came in the prior game um, for an injured Ryan Broderick. As a 15-year-old starting varsity quarterback, all uh, Jaden Arno did a year ago at Winchester was pass for three touchdowns, rush for another. He had no interceptions. And the Marauders won that game 41 to 14. Very impressive debut for Jaden Arno. It's a second down run for Adrian Garung. And Garung will uh, get back the lost yard and a couple more. So it's going to be third down and about eight. With the Marauders needing to get to the 30 to pick up a first down and keep this drive going. It's their first offensive series. Marauders with multiple receivers on the field. Brian Logan is split wide here on the near side of the field. Bryce Hubbard is in the near side slot. Jaden Arno is going to fire far side. It's incomplete. Well overthrown to the intended target. And the Marauders, unfortunately, will have to punt on their first offensive series. I believe he was looking for Chris Cogliano, who scored two receiving touchdowns against Cambridge back in week one. Marauders offense was hoping and, and are hoping they're going to get back on track here tonight. But Belmont opens the season with 43 points and six touchdowns against Cambridge Ridge and Ladin over the last four or the last three games, of which the Marauders have lost all three games, the offense has scored only four touchdowns. And uh, once again, okay, back in punt formation. And again, this is not Austin Lasseter. This is senior captain Asa Rosenmeyer, who is uh, who had the kickoff, he's gonna fumble the snap, now he's gonna punt it away, it's a relatively short kick. And it could be some emergency uh, punting duties here. It will go out of bounds at the 40, they're gonna mark it at the 44 of Belmont. So overall about a 20 yard kick, 20 yard punt for Asa Rosenmeyer. First and 10, Winchester, and for the second consecutive drive, the red and black will start the drive in Belmont territory, this time at the 44-yard line. Their first drive that led to a Kieran Core field goal. They started at the 40 following the um, big kickoff return by Ben Wilson. 5.28 to go here in the first quarter. And Winchester looking to add on to a 3-0 lead. Doucette gets the handoff. He'll go far side, Doucette... Brought down inside the 40 for a gain of about five. So as we said, Marauders looking to uh, snap their three-game losing streak. Losing to Wakefield 36-12. 
losing at Tewksbury 40-6 and then opening up Liberty Division play with a 35-7 loss at Reading. Here is the quarterback, Centarelli, keeping it himself, and he'll have a first down. He gets out of bounds, but not before picking up the first for Winchester down around the uh, Belmont 30-yard line. Again, I see Austin Laster on the sideline. I don't want to harp on this too much, but it is interesting that he's not kicking tonight, and we did see him out there playing defense earlier. Here's a long throw to the end zone, and it will drop incomplete. Adrian Garung was in coverage, and it was Jack Costello, the intended Winchester wide receiver. And again, it felt like Cinterelli had to get rid of that ball quickly as the Marauders were applying a little bit of pressure. That's the one thing the Marauders have done well here in the early going. They've been able to... Uh, Get some pressure on the Winchester quarterback. A lot of it's been coming from uh, Brian Logan in his defensive end spot, number four. And also looking at that front defensive line, Evan Muriel, number 64 out there. Of course, we mentioned uh, Asa Rosenmeyer, 77, and now flags fly. I'm guessing a little bit of a, uh, well, no, it's actually going to be offside on Belmont. Little, uh, little neutral zone infraction called on the Marauders. So that will turn a second in 10 into second in five. As the ball gets moved to the Belmont 25 yard line. So Marauders uh, unfortunately shooting themselves in the foot with some of these penalties. Certainly cost them on that first drive. To run with a big 25 yard run on Belmont's first offensive play only to have it called back on a holding penalty. And then the Marauders went nowhere the rest of the drive and had to punt back to Winchester and This defensive penalty sets up a uh, second and uh, somewhat short situation. That again, I believe that was Doucette again. He swarmed by the Marauder defense. So far, the uh, junior running back, Ryan Doucette, has uh, taken all the handoffs from quarterback Jack Centarelli. Gain of maybe one and a half. Winchester has to get to the 20 of Belmont to keep this drive going and pick up a first down. So it's third down, either a short four or a long three, and it'll be a Centarelli quarterback keeper. He goes to the far side. He's close to the first down marker. I believe he's got it. Again, tackled on the far side. Brian Logan in on the tackle. It was one of the Marauders making the stop. But not before Winchester picks up yet another first down. Clock running, 348, 347 to go here in this first quarter. And Winchester looking to add on to a 3-0 lead. Got two receivers split to the uh, near side. Ben Wilson uh, is closest here to the near side of the field. He's wide handoff again to Doucette, and he gets nothing. That time, uh, big 73 Harry Carlson was in there amongst others to make the stop for Belmont. No gain, and it'll be second and 10. Ball spotted at the 20-yard line. Of course, I was also thinking back here to a, a great game I remember calling uh, six years ago here at Harrisfield between these two teams. Marauders won 28 to 21 thanks to running back Ben Jones. Remember him, Marauder fans? Jones ran for 207 yards and three touchdowns, including the game winner, which is 19 seconds left to give the Marauders a very exciting win here at Harris Field. Pass is complete on the far side of the field. I believe that's Will Schlesinger, number 17, a senior captain. And he'll get to the 15-yard line. Going to bring up uh, third down and five, maybe a little less. And again, Winchester, unlike a lot of teams, uh, if they don't make the third down conversion here, feel very confident taking, for them, what must feel like an automatic three points off the uh, right foot of Kieran Core. 
See if the Mariners can make the stop here and hold Winchester to that field goal attempt. It'll be kept by Centarelli. He's running, and I think he's a little short of the first down. Logan makes the stop, but he is shy of the 10. It's going to be fourth and one. So they spot it at the 11. It's fourth and one at the 10. Let's see if Wally Dombowski decides to go for it. Again, he's got an automatic three points if he wants to take it with uh, Kieran Kaur, number nine, but I do not see Kaur going out onto the field. So it looks like uh, Coach Dembowski feels confident in the way his offense has been going so far here in the early going and is going to go for this, or they might try to just draw the Marauders offside. Let's see. Let's see if it's a long, prolonged count here by uh, quarterback Centarelli. Oh, all right. Whoa, what do we got? We have a, nope, we have a timeout taken by Coach Dembowski. So he was trying to get the Marauders to jump. They did not. But let's see. We've got a timeout on the field here. One minute, 41 seconds to go. First quarter. Winchester leading 3-0. We're happy you could join us on BHS Sports TV's coverage of Marauder football. I am Todd Bologna. our videographer tonight, Peter Jaw. And uh, again, just a wonderful night for football here. As both teams come into the action here, 1-3. And, and both 0-1 in Liberty Division play of the Middlesex League. Both teams looking to snap a three-game losing streak. Something's got to give tonight, unless, of course, we uh, wind up in a tie, which I think is virtually impossible now with the high school overtime rules. So I think they keep playing till somebody wins. Speaking of winning, we want to give a shout-out to Belmont Girls Soccer. Marauders won earlier today. I think the score was 5-1 in the game that was wrapping up here at Harris Field as uh, we were uh, getting ready to set up for this football broadcast. So uh, with that win, I believe the Marauders... Uh, I think improved their record to 500 uh, girls soccer program. So congrats on the win today. I believe they beat Winchester. Boy, I remember many years ago when I was, I think I might have called a Belmont Winchester girls soccer game uh, when uh, Paul Graham was uh, the, the coach and uh, Lindsey Knoll was uh, the uh, one of the top scorers. Uh, shout out to Lindsey Knoll if you're watching anyway. <laughs> wherever, wherever she may be nowadays. Here is a fourth down. They're going forward and a big stop from Rodgers. Asa Rosenmeyer, no, check that, Harry Carlson, number 73, with the tackle for a loss. He takes down the Winchester running back who was, uh, I want to say that was number 50, Tyler Wong, who took the handoff. As they tried to hand it off to someone other than Doucette, thinking the Marauders might be expecting that, but Belmont makes the stop. Winchester had an automatic three points from their kicker. They, uh, Coach Dombowski elected not to kick the field goal. He went for it, and the Marauders come up big with the stop. So now it's time for Belmont head coach and offensive coordinator Brian McCray to dial up some plays for Jaden Arno and the offense. Arno trying to capture some of that magic he did a year ago against this same Winchester ball club. And on first down, he'll be going right down the field. It's deep, and it is knocked away incomplete. Hogan, the, uh, sorry, Logan, the attempted receiver. Kevin Sensian was in on the coverage and broke that pass up. So it's going to be second down and 10. Jaden Arno starting 0 for 2 with passes, both kind of long passes downfield. You tend to think in a situation like this to maybe help. Uh, help the quarterback out a little bit, that maybe the next pass play that's called will be just a little like throw to the flat, let him get that first completion, and also maybe see what the receiver can do after the catch. So we're down under 90 seconds to go in the first quarter. A little razzle-dazzle misdirection, and that is uh, Garung who gets the ball. There were multiple men in motion there, and Garung's going to take the handoff and get it all the way up to the 20 yard line will end up about a yard short of the first down. Adrian Garung, who had two touchdowns in the Marauders opening week win against Cambridge, gains nine on that play, brings up third and one. That'll also take a little pressure off of Jaden Arno. It is Arno back in the shotgun on third and one, and there's movement on the line. Number 55 of Winchester jumped. I believe that's going to be a neutral zone infraction, unless he was, it is. They're going to move him right up. 
That would be one of the uh, Winchester captains, senior Parker Negatagal. He jumped, and it's an automatic first down for the Marauders. They will take it as it's their first first down here tonight. Belmont marching band led by Allison Lacasse in her fourth season at the helm. And uh, you just heard the little Bel uh, a truncated version of the Belmont Victory Song, or the fight song. There's a long throw downfield. It's caught by Cogliano. Cogliano into Winchester territory for the first time tonight. Down all the way to the 30-yard line. A great throw by Jaden Arno. Looks like for a minute it might be a little bit long, but Chris Cogliano used his entire 6'3", 180 pound frame to reach up and pull that one in and then pick up some big yards after the catch. They'll spot the ball inside the Winchester 30. And the Marauders really in business now, getting their second consecutive first down on as many snaps. And that will bring the first quarter to an end. With the score, a Winchester three, Belmont nothing, but the Marauders on the move here for the first time this evening. As again, they are trying to snap themselves a three game losing streak. As we said, both teams one and three, both 0 and one in Liberty Division play. And both teams coming in having lost their last three games. Marauders looking to right themselves. Cogliano, as we mentioned, had two touchdowns. Two touchdown receptions from quarterback uh, Jaden Arno in the uh, week one win against Cambridge. Marauders hoping that the offense will start to look uh, a little bit better than it has the last few weeks. Marauders will continue uh, Liberty Division play next week at Lexington. And then we'll be back here at Harris Field two weeks from tonight against Arlington in what will be a senior night. Belmont seniors will be honored prior to the start of that game and we'll uh, plan to bring that game to you here on BHS Sports TV's coverage of Marauder football. As the Marauders and Spy Ponders will do football battle in a couple of weeks. Again, I'm Todd Bloniers, Peter Jahl, our videographer tonight, filling in for the vacationing Jeremy Meserve. Well deserved, I might add. Executive producer of BHS Sports TV. He is out here all the time shooting sports all year long. First and 10, Belmont. Arno's going to keep it himself this time. Arno still going, breaking tackles inside the 10 and all the way down to the Winchester five yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Marauders. Great run by Jaden Arno. That's just the sort of uh, footwork he flashed a year ago up at Winchester when in his varsity debut, he ran for one touchdown and passed for three others. And the Marauders really in business now. First and goal at the Winchester five, looking to take the lead here in the early moments of the second quarter. Adrian Garung is the lone setback as Jaden Arno under center, the fullback is Asa Rosenmeyer, as we saw that in week one. Here's Garong, he tries to go behind the Asa Rosenmeyer block, but uh, there were several white shirts in there. Asa could not block all of them, and they were able to uh, stop Garung for no gain. So second and goal at the Winchester five. We'll see what the play call will be by head coach Brian McRae, who again doubles as offense coordinator for these Marauders in his second season at the helm. Overall record of five and 10 so far in his brief uh, Belmont head coaching career. This time it'll be Arno in the shotgun. Second and goal, he'll throw it to the flat. It's to Lassiter and Lassiter is swarmed there and uh, they'll blow the play dead. Will Schlesinger defensively stopped Lassiter immediately. So Lassiter being used as a wide receiver and defensive back, but apparently uh, has uh, been removed of his kicking duties, interestingly enough. We don't see him out there kicking unless, unless whatever minor injury he has is only affecting his, uh, his kicking and punting ability, but we, he is out there on the field running around and just caught that pass from Arno. 
It's actually going to be a loss on the play all the way back to the 10. So third down and goal coming up here for Belmont at the Winchester 10. From the five, I might have thought had the Marauders not gained any more yards that perhaps Coach McRae would consider going for it. I'm not sure he will on fourth and goal from the 10. However, should also point out here, though, uh, seems like the Belmont kicking situation is in a little bit of flux, so maybe they will. Maybe it is four down territory. Here's Arno. He's got some open real estate on the far side, and he is still on his feet. There's a late flag thrown in. Arno is tackled around the five-yard line. We'll wait to see what the flag is here. Let's see. We're going to have a little bit of a conference. We'll wait to see what the official says. They're talking, and here comes the referee. It's going to be personal foul face mask on Winchester. That ought to be, I think that's an automatic first down. So on third and goal from the 10. Jaden Arno gets down to the five, and that's going to be half the distance from there. So put the ball at about the two and a half yard line. First and goal. Very untimely penalty for the red and black of Winchester. Puts the Marauders in great business now after it looked like they were going to get stopped on that third and goal play. So first and goal Belmont at the Winchester two and a half yard line. Marauders looking to take the lead as we come up on nine minutes to go here in the first half. Arno in the shotgun, handing off Lassiter. Getting close to the goal line, but does not get there. The ball may have come loose. I don't know. I saw a lot of action down there in the, in the scrum. Yeah, I'm a little confused here, too. We've had some issues with the, the dial it down tonight. Uh, apparently, even after that personal foul, it was still third down. I would have thought that would have, I thought the personal foul would have resulted in an automatic first down. That last play should have been first and goal to two and a half. Instead, the officials called it third and goal, and the Marauders did not get into the end zone, so it is now fourth and goal. It's the second time tonight I've been a little confused by uh, what the officials have uh, done out there on the field as far as calling the downs. I mean, er, uh, first play of the game, Garung had a 25-yard run. Marauders got called for holding, and the ball did not move. The, the Marauders got the ball back at the same spot that the play originated at, which, again, I, they, they didn't seem to assess the penalty. Fourth and goal is a fumbled snap. And unfortunately, the Marauders are going to come out of this with no points. It looked like there was a fumbled exchange as the ball was being snapped to quarterback Jaden Arno. But now there's a lot of whistles and a lot of confusion here. And there's a flag on the field. It's over here on the flag was thrown over way on the near side of the field, far away from the play. I they might be. Let's see if they're going to call something. You know, that looks like they're calling offside, offside on Winchester. Well, now here's my question. That might be a penalty on Winchester on fourth and goal. But will it be an automatic Belmont first down? It ought to be, but I don't know. They might just keep this at fourth and goal. As I said, I am kind of confused why penalties get assessed and. Well, it's not the first time that this announcer's had questions about the officiating, so I'll say that. But I hope anybody with the knowledge of football is having some questions tonight. I don't feel like I'm, you know... It is, it's fourth down, it's fourth down again! They're replaying fourth down. I'm not sure why the penalty didn't give a first down, so fourth and goal, and the Marauders score a touchdown! So after all that confusion, the Marauders get six points! And I believe... That was, that was Asa? They, they went back to the refrigerator, Refrigerator Rosenmeyer? He pushed the end of the, I think he was behind the pile. Oh, he was behind the pile, so that was Garung who went in? We couldn't tell who scored the touchdown. I, I would say that it probably should have been Adrian Garung with Asa Rosenmeyer helping up to push the pile along, or it might have been Rosenmeyer doing his Refrigerator Perry impression, and uh, either way, the Marauders have scored a touchdown with 7.37 to go here in the first half, and they have taken a six to three lead and now Asen Rosenmeyer is going to kick the extra point, or try to. Isaiah, our save alone with the hold, the kick. It's a line drive, but it's good. Asen Rosemeyer with the extra point, much like his opening kickoff, was a line drive, splitting the uprights with 7.37 to go here in the second quarter, making it Belmont 7 and Winchester 3. The Marauders 
finishing off an impressive drive. Now, unless they, again, I'm sorry, i got to go back to this. Unless they've changed the rules of high school football, I do not understand why the defense gets called for penalties and it is not an automatic first down. I mean, thankfully, all I'm going to say is thankfully, the Marauders were able to convert on that last fourth down because had they been stopped and had Winchester not committed a penalty, I think they would have given the ball back to the red and black and the Marauders would have had no points out of that possession. Please, if anybody is out there watching who has a better understanding than I, I mean, I think I know enough about football to, to not be, I, I cannot figure out for the life of me why if the defense commits a penalty, it is not an automatic first down. Especially when it's like fourth and short. I mean, the, the penalty yardage alone should get you a first down. If you're assessing the penalty, then I, I, again, I don't know. All right, enough of me blathering on. Sorry about this. This is what you get when you have no uh, color analyst for me to work with. Uh, I have to fill both roles, and uh, the color analyst in me is saying, I don't know what's wrong with the officiating tonight. Meanwhile, let's get back to the kickoff here. It is taken uh, by Wilson, and this time uh, does not get as good a return as he did to open the ball game. He is tackled at the 35-yard line. First time Winchester's going to start a drive in their own territory. First and 10 at their own 35. 7.28 to go here in the first half, and the Marauders now leading 7-3 to three after that touchdown. Ball spotted at the 34 of Winchester, first and 10 for Jack Centarelli in the Winchester offense. Three receivers split here to the near side. One to the far side. Naturally, that's where the throw goes. It's to the far side. Two Wilson. Wilson makes the catch. Short gain. He's wrapped up for pickup of maybe two or three yards. Second down. Of course, credit on that uh, touchdown drive, not only for how the Marauders finished the drive, but the drive started with a big pass play from quarterback Jaden Arno to senior receiver Chris Cogliano. A pair of Marauder captains contributing on the deep pass play that set the Marauders up with a great field position and uh, helped them to continue that drive along. Second down, finally, uh, nope, that's checked, that's to set again. I thought for a minute uh, Coach Dombowski had another running back going, but it's back to the junior, Ryan Doucette. Doucette gets across the 40 to the 41-yard line as a light misting rain is falling. Do I dare want to say it's spitting? I don't know. As, a, as someone who has broadcast many games, I find this sort of rain totally annoying because it's just enough to really not affect anybody, but as someone who tends to have a lot of papers in front of them, it's just enough to sort of make everything in front of me all soggy, especially if I'm trying to keep notes, which I can't do. Meanwhile, we have an offside penalty called on Belmont. Now, interestingly enough, on that penalty by Belmont, Winchester picked up a first down. Okay, uh, I'm totally stymied now. Long throw downfield, and that pass is incomplete, but we're going to have a penalty, and it looks like it's going to be pass interference on the Marauders. Number 10, Harry Lowenstein in now at quarterback. He's a junior and was competing... Uh, in the preseason uh, for the quarterback job with Centarelli, and he's now in at quarterback. Again, Dabowski trying to change things up, and they call pass interference on Belmont. There was double coverage down there by the Marauders, and it uh, looked like there was a good pass breakup, but of course from this angle, Always hard to tell if there's some clutching and grabbing going on, especially over on the far side of the field. Uh, they are actually, it's not a spot foul, so they're going to spot this ball at the Belmont 39. Nonetheless, Winchester does get a first down from the Belmont defensive penalty. Actually, that's two consecutive penalties from the Belmont defense, and both resulted in first downs. Again, I need to point this out because that's kind of what usually happens when the defense gets flagged. Didn't seem to happen on that last Belmont drive, but again, 
I guess a story I'll continue probably harping on. Here's a uh, pass on the flat. It is caught over there by Jack Costello, and he's going to get a first down inside the Belmont 30. So Winchester taking advantage of the Belmont penalties and now moving their way down the field. They'll spot this at the Belmont 20-yard line. As Costello picked up some extra yards at the end of that play. That was senior wideout Jack Costello making the catch from Lowenstein. The Lowenstein is still in a quarterback on this series. Ryan Doucette is flanked to his left. Again, a very, very light rain falling. Lowenstein with a little pump fake. Now we'll go to the end zone. And the pass is long for the intended receiver, Ben Wilson. Incomplete. That'll make it second and 10 from the Belmont 20-yard line as Winchester looks to retake the lead here with 5.26 to go in the first half. These really are the kind of nights that I, uh, I really do miss having a color analyst, especially someone who uh, knows a little bit more about football than I do because, uh, again, we just had some very strange calls in this game. Meanwhile, here is, uh, I believe that's Lowenstein on the second down play and a nice tackle made over here by Isaiah Arsvalon. He uh, came in in the uh, Cambridge game as the backup quarterback, uh, played uh, final uh, minutes of that game. First and goal for Winchester. They're spotting this ball at the uh, Belmont eight-yard line. Am I going to have to break on my umbrella here too? I'm trying to see, trying to wait to see how hard this rain comes down. Your trusty broadcaster did come prepared tonight, and thankfully there's no one sitting behind him, so... You know what, I think with the rain coming down, he is going to pop this one open. Now here's a bad, pass is bad and incomplete. That's going to be an incomplete pass. Actually, I'm sure uh, if Peter Jaw can get a shot of, uh, our videographer can get a shot of the light stanchion maybe during one of the timeouts, he probably can pick up very well the rain coming down. And in fact, uh, he's saying he's shooting. Meanwhile, we have a flag on the field. Coach Brian McRae is beside himself, and no, that doesn't mean he's been cloned. Um, I'm kind of beside myself here, too. It's just been a weird night for the officials here at the get-go. And let's see what they're going to call. Pass was batted away and complete by the Marauders, and I'm not sure what they're calling here. Well, now as I opened my umbrella, the rain let up, so we will. Uh, I think they said there was a chance for some light showers in the forecast tonight. There's a cold front that's going to be coming through the area later this evening, setting us up for a very autumn-feeling weekend. Temperatures uh, only expected to uh, top out in the 50s after it reached uh, the mid-70s here in Belmont uh, earlier today. Coach McRae is talking with the official. He wants to get an understanding as to uh, what is the call, and he doesn't seem to be pleased with the result. Of <laughs> Here's the referee now talking to Coach McRae. Well, at this point, I can feel with the Marauders head coach because uh, I've been uh, scratching my head uh, for a bit here this evening. Flag has not even been picked up yet. I'm guessing based on Coach McCray's reaction, this penalty is going to be on Belmont. But it is a very long conversation. This all comes with four minutes and 30 seconds to go here in the second quarter. It is a Belmont 7, Winchester 3 between these two Middlesex League Liberty Division squads. Both of them coming into tonight's action at 1-3. and three. Both of them 0-1 in Liberty Division play. After all is said and done, McCray looked like he had some final words for the referee. Referee turned around. I know if this was a basketball game, uh, McCray probably would have been uh, teed up right there, but uh, 
I don't think they can do that in football. Of course, they could throw another flag for unsportsmanlike on the uh, on the Belmont bench, but I don't think they did that either. All right. Well, let's see how many yards they're marking off here. This could be. Well, this is looking like a. It's a 15-yard penalty. So my guess is they're calling the call was some sort of a personal foul against the Marauders. That. Uh, I happen to be sitting here right next to a uh, legendary Belmont citizen and uh, BMC uh, host, uh, Stephen Rosales. He's hosted multiple shows on the BMC channels, and Steve's quite uh, just as confused as I am. I'm almost thinking if we had an extra headset, I'd throw it on Steve right now because he's feeling like I am, and then he's, he's as confused too because there was no uh, explanation as to what the penalty was. I know the referee did go up and explain it face-to-face -to, -face to Coach Brian McRae, but it was not explained to the rest of us. Regardless, which I, a word I seem to be using quite a bit tonight, it is first and goal for Winchester. The ball is at the Belmont nine-yard line. As the red and black look to retake the lead here at Harris Field. Handoff to set, and uh, Doucette looks like he's going to get down inside the five. It'll bring up second and goal. No flags thrown. As uh, we are down to 4.15, 4.14, clock running here in the first half. It's been a penalty-filled night, and uh, whether the penalties have been assessed or not assessed, there seems to be a lot of confusion, and it's trickling right down to the head coaches of these teams. <laughs> Coach McCray certainly was not satisfied with whatever explanation he was given on that last uh, what turned out to be a 15-yard penalty. There have been three penalties on the Belmont defense on this drive, which has basically helped Winchester get into the second-and-goal situation with the ball now at the Belmont 2. Handoff. Ryan Doucette, he goes to the right, and he is very close to the goal line, but I don't see a touchdown signal from the officials, so that's going to bring up third down and goal with the ball probably about as close as you can get to being in the end zone without actually touching the white line. Public address announcer Al Gledhill is saying it's the one and a half yard line, so maybe not quite as close as I thought. But here we go. It's third and goal from the one and a half. Lowenstein in the shotgun. He's going to oh, check that. It's Cinterelli in the shotgun. He goes, and I thought he got dragged down from behind. Looks like he's short of the goal line again. Great job by the Belmont defense which, in case you forgot earlier, has already made one big stop uh, in a goal-to-go situation. It was fourth and goal. Fourth and one, and Coach Dombowski of Winchester issued the automatic three points from his excellent kicker, Kier and Core. Went for it on fourth and one inside the Belmont 10 in the first quarter. Didn't make it. And now we've got fourth and goal again for Winchester. This time the ball at the one-yard line, and Coach Dombowski will wisely here take a timeout. It comes with two minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first half. It is Belmont 7, Winchester 3, if you just joined us. If you are, we wish you a good evening from Harris Field here in Belmont. We are broadcasting live on belmontmedia.org slash info TV, also streaming live tonight on the Belmont Media YouTube channel. And, of course, you can watch us locally in Belmont on Comcast channels 96 and Verizon channels 30 and 2130, which is the HD channel. By the way, BHS Sports TV is supported by the work of volunteers like myself and our hardworking staff. We need you to be a video volunteer, so please consider volunteering by co contacting Julie DeStefano by email. You can contact her access at belmontmedia.org the uh, sports coverage here in Belmont uh, we really could use your volunteers so uh, we do appreciate it like we got uh, Peter Jall uh, pinch hitting for us tonight here on camera doing an excellent job fourth and goal Winchester trying to get into the end zone can the Marauders come up with the stop and it's going to be a touchdown for the red and black. A quarterback keeper. 
by number 16, Jack Centarelli, who came in at the tail end of that Winchester drive. And Winchester has retaken the lead 9-7 with 2.14 to go here in the second quarter with the extra point pending. So a Winchester drive that was fueled by several Belmont penalties, the last of which still has most of us uh, scratching our heads in wonderment. Of course, the way this evening's gone, if I scratch my head any further, I'm going to start peeling some scalp. The kick by Core is up and good. And the teams will come back upfield with 2 minutes and 14 seconds to go here in the opening half. And it is now Winchester 10 and Belmont 7 in a game that is playing exactly as advertised. Two evenly matched 1-3 and three squads going back and forth. And as we mentioned, the last three times these teams have played at Harris Field, the winner has been decided by a touchdown or less. As uh, I mentioned Steven Rosales a moment ago, and he just pointed out again correctly so, it, it, it's returned back from behind the clouds. It is a uh, full waxing gibbous moon officially. The full moon is actually going to take place two days from now. Yes, your intrepid broadcaster looks this information up. I'm not just pulling this uh, off the top of my head. No, he, did the, he researches things for the game. I just let you know. It is waxing gibbous. It's very close to full. It's two days away. No, Steve, you're not far off there. Steve thinks it's a full moon. And you know what? Again, based on some of the officiating tonight, you would think it was a full moon for sure. Here is Austin Lassiter with the return from the end zone, except there's a lot of, oh, they're going to say oh, touchback. Okay. He apparently caught the ball in the end zone. Must have put his knee down really fast. He thought he was going to fool the official, but he didn't. So it's a touchback. Lassiter now talking to the official. Well, you know, <laughs> the way this evening is going. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I don't really want this to be a night. I mean, I don't want this to be a night where I'm doing nothing but questioning every call that's been made. But, I mean, even Austin Lassiter's talking to the official there. He says, you know, I think he was probably saying that he didn't think he put his knee to the ground, but there was an official back in the end zone, and he claimed that Lassiter did, and thus it is a touchback on that kickoff, and so Belmont starts this drive at their own 20-yard line. We have 2.09 to go here in the first half. Marauders looking and hoping they can uh, retake the lead before halftime. They trail 10-7. Jaden Arno's back in the shotgun. And he's got Adrian Garung flanked to his right, Looks like Cogliato number one is set up here in the uh, near side slot. There's a pass over the middle. That pass is complete, and it'll be good for a Belmont first down. That yeah, was caught by uh, 83, Bryce Hubbard, junior wide receiver. You might remember his older brother, Zach Hubbard, former Belmont senior captain, who is now uh, attending Northeastern University. Actually ran into Zach at a uh, game here at Harris Field that we were calling last year. And uh, Zach, uh, at least when I saw him last year, seemed to be enjoying college life immensely. Jaden Arnold is going to keep that one himself. He'll run out of bounds on a first down play and pick up some pretty good yardage on the first down run. Little quarterback keeper for Jaden Arno. Also the younger brother of a former Belmont Marauder. That would be Avery Arno. In fact, both Avery Arno and Zach Hubbard, I remember a few years ago we did a, uh, did a uh, little uh, pre-Thanksgiving special. Uh, we had five Belmont captains and, uh, in studio, including Avery and Zach. Got to meet them. Uh, good bunch of guys, that uh, senior captain squad from the, uh, the 2019 team. Second down, Jaden's back to throw that pass incomplete. Looks like it went through the uh, hands of the intended receiver, Ben William, who is uh, one of the five senior captains on the Marauders. Don't think I mentioned all the captains earlier. I've kind of been picking them out as they've been involved in plays, but uh, the five senior captains are Chris Cogliano, Jaden Arno, he's technically not a senior captain, only a junior, Jake Cornelius, Ben William, and Asa Rosenmeyer. Round out your five-man captaincy unit for the Marauders. 
133 to go. Third down and four for the Marauders. They have to get to, uh, looks like outside uh, the Belmont 42 to pick up the first down. Jaden Arno will fire it downfield. He's got Cogliano for a first down and more. Chris Cogliano still going and he's inside the Winchester 20 yard line. His second big reception and run after catch in this game. Jaden Arno finding Chris Cogliano on third down and the pair hook up for a first down into Winchester territory and immediately Brian McRae will call a timeout with a minute 23 to go here in the first half. Again, happy to join us here at Harris Field tonight. Todd Bloniar is our videographer, Peter Jahl. Here at Harris Field, again, a beautiful fall evening, despite the fact we've had a little bit of rain. But right now, clear skies and that beautiful waxing gibbous, almost a full moon up there in the sky. The officials may not be aware it's a waxing gibbous, but uh, <laughs> all right, I got in another shot. I'm sorry. See if I had a color analyst here. Well, again, this goes back to uh, what I said earlier. Uh, BHS Sports TV uh, is looking for volunteers to uh, to both shoot the video and also get on the air. Talk to me if you want me to shut up, and you can be you could be the other voice in the broadcast booth and uh, tell me I'm crazy for uh, thinking uh, I should be questioning these officials' calls tonight. Anyway, we now have a first and ten. Belmont at the Winchester 20-yard line. 1.23 to go here in the first half. Jaden Arno, Belmont junior quarterback and co-captain, is in the shotgun. He'll fire near side pass caught by William. First down inside the 10. It'll be first and go, first and goal to go for the Marauders from there as they look to retake the lead here in the second quarter. Nice little slant, a simple slant from quarterback Jaden Arno to his fellow, uh, check that, senior wide receiver Ben Williams, fellow captain. Here's Jaden Arno keeping himself running up the middle, and he's got a touchdown for the Marauders who retake the lead. 13 to 10, the extra point pending. An eight yard touchdown run from junior quarterback Jaden Arno. Keeping it himself, he had a big hole up the middle, running behind the offensive line. And the Marauders back in the end zone once again, getting down deep into Winchester ter territory, thanks largely to another good, deep pass play from Arno to Chris Cogliano. He kind of set it up well. And here is Big Asa Rosenmeyer, captain with the kick. And that kick is good! Two wide drive kicks by Asa Rosenmeyer, and both of them split the uprights. We have exactly one minute to go until halftime. And it is now Belmont 14 and Winchester 10 in what is really shaping up to be a great ball game. Let's hope it's decided on the field. And you know where I'm going with that, but I'm not gonna say it this time. The Belmont High School Marching Band getting ready to take the field here at halftime. They'll put on a, I already know they're going to take on another great show. While we have a moment, give a quick shout out here to Bob Lassiter. He's watching in Texas. He is Austin's grandfather. He's also the grandfather of Austin's older brother, Gordon Lassiter, a former Belmont Marauder. He was actually on the Marauder squad last year. Austin inheriting his big brother's number 20. And again, if you're watching uh, tonight's coverage from anywhere outside of Belmont, you can uh, please ma consider making a donation to BMC at belmontmedia.org slash donate. Again, that's belmontmedia.org slash donate. And uh, hopefully you are watching us, uh, even if you're from outside of Belmont, uh, either through belmontmedia.org slash info TV or from the Belmont Media YouTube channel. We're happy to be able to broadcast all the way, all over the world, really, through the internet. It's a line drive squibbed kick, which is exactly what you should do at this spot here late in the first half. And the ball will be returned to the Winchester 35. 53 seconds to go here in the first half. 
And the Marauders just needing to make uh, a couple of stops here before halftime. See the Marauders' uh, defensive coordinator down on the stand, uh, sidelines. That would be uh, Dan Mullen. Calls the defensive plays for head coach Brian McRae. Let's see, I believe, looks like it is uh, Lowenstein back in the quarterback, number 10. So uh, Coach Dombowski going to switch it up at the QB spot. You know how much I love that. Here's a pass over the middle. That's going to be complete. Forward progress should give Winchester a first down, but not much more than the 10 yards. Pass caught. I think that was Jack Costello. Ball is just outside the Winchester 45. Clock running, 40 seconds, 39 seconds. Not sure if Winchester has any more timeouts as they're letting the clock run. Pass caught over on the uh, far side. Close to midfield, probably got into Belmont territory. It won't be enough for a first down. And uh, the clock is going to finally stop. I believe Coach Dembowski of Winchester has taken a timeout. And that comes with 25 seconds to go here in the first half. Belmont 14 and Winchester 10 as we approach halftime. Marauders just taking the lead moments ago on the Jaden Arno quarterback keeper on the first and goal play. Marauders also had a first quarter, or I checked out an early second quarter touchdown. No, it was a first quarter touchdown. No, I'm sorry, it was a second quarter touchdown. Okay, I'm trying to remember which end I saw it out. Marauders have two rushing touchdowns tonight. Still kind of unsure who got that first touchdown. It might have been Adrian Garung, might have been Asa Rosenmeyer. There was a big, there was a big rugby-like scrum, which to several of the Belmont Marauder football players is a familiar sight since they play in the spring for the BHS rugby team. A squad that has won multiple state championships. You can check out their coverage on BHS Sports TV during the spring season. Here's another pass play over the middle. Pass will be caught, but uh, receiver will be kept in bounds. Pass caught by Ben Wilson. He cannot get to the sideline. And with no timeouts left, that's going to uh, likely finish off the first half. Is Well, let's see now. Whoop. Well, despite having no timeouts and not getting out of bounds... Well, nope, here we go. The clock was running, and they did not get the snap off in time. Now it, the, clock's, uh, the clock has hit triple zero. We are officially at halftime. Winchester was trying to get a final snap away, but could not. And so 24 minutes in the books, and the Marauders with a 14-10 lead on a couple of rushing touchdowns and a very good back-and-forth game as uh, we'll get ready to bring you the second-half action. We're going to take a little break here on uh, BHS Sports TV's coverage of Marauder football, but be back. we'll be back for second half action in just a little bit. Again, your halftime score, Belmont 14 and Winchester 10. Meanwhile, both uh, Belmont and Winchester are uh, off the sidelines, back on the field, getting ready to start third quarter with Belmont leading 14-10 after having scored a late touchdown on a uh, first and goal keeper from junior quarterback and co-captain Jaden Arno. In a game with multiple lead changes, there's a deep kick going all the way back to, uh, check that's 25 on the return for the Marauders and a pretty decent return made there by uh, Miles Torres, sophomore and uh, one of uh, several Marauders to also play on the Belmont rugby team during the spring sports season. There is a flag on the field. Uh, let's see what they're calling here. Uh, flag got picked up pretty fast. Let's see. Oh, we got to have an illegal block, and it is on. Uh, it's a personal foul on Winchester. Normally, uh, you would think personal foul on the kicking team that maybe uh, somebody, uh, maybe the return man, Torres, was uh, maybe grabbed by the face mask or something, but we did not see the officials elaborate as to what the personal foul was. So once again, I say, regardless, 
Marauders have a first and 10 to start the second half in this third quarter from their own 42-yard line. Adrian Garung bounces off the line of scrimmage, and he will be close to first down yardage. He is into Winchester territory down to the 45-yard line, a pickup of eight by Adrian Garung, whose longest run in this uh, game so far actually did not count. It was a 25-yard run on Belmont's first offensive play of the game, which got called back on a holding penalty, and yet the ball was brought back to the original line of scrimmage. No penalty yards assessed, interestingly enough. Second down, Arno is looking. He'll uh, roll out, and now he's going to come all the way back looking for some blocks. Always dangerous here. You might get an illegal block. Arno's going to keep it. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. So it'll be no gains going to bring up third down. Arno uh, could not find a receiver downfield. There was some good coverage by the red and black defense of Winchester. So third down, and we'll call it three from the Winchester 46. You need to get to the 43 for a first down. Belmont with two second quarter touchdowns, both rushing. The first by either Adrian Garung or Asa Rosenmeyer. We'll give it to Garung. Let's just give it to somebody. Adrian Garung's going to get the touchdown unofficially. And then uh, we've got a third down run. Speaking of Garung, he's got a first down and he's got more. Longest run of the night. Or junior Adrian Garung, he's got a Belmont first down inside the Winchester 25-yard line. Good running behind that uh, Belmont offensive line, including the likes of uh, Harry Carlson, Ryan Halloran, Max Cornelius. Ball spotted at the Winchester 24, first and 10. Arno in the shotgun, Gurung to his right. And now Adrian will shift over to the left of Jaden, who will keep it himself. And he faked a throw, and he'll keep running. And Jaden picks up some pretty good yards going over to the far side of the field. Gain of about uh, six or seven there. Bring up second down. As we said, Jaden Arno made his uh, first varsity start a year ago at Winchester, and all he did that night was pass for three touchdowns, run for another, didn't have an interception, turnover free, and the 15-year-old varsity quarterback, as he was a year ago, led the Marauders to a 41-14 win against Winchester. These teams, the last six meetings, have split the games three and three, we said it would be a close back and forth game, and that's exactly the way it's played through the first half. Pass is caught and complete. Brian Logan making the catch for the Marauders. He'll have a Marauder first down. Another good drive here for the Marauders to start this second half. And it'll be first and 10 at the, uh, ball's just inside the 10 yard line. Calling it first and goal. William and Cogliano are uh, split here to the uh, near side. Uh, here's Jaden Arno bidding for a second rushing touchdown to the game and he's got it! Touchdown Marauders, Jaden Arno does it again. Calling his own number, the junior co-captain. And there is a penalty, so scratch all that. We'll just rewind that call back. That would be, uh, yes, your, your announcer tonight trying to have a little bit of fun as I had to uh, call back that touchdown. Holding penalty on the Marauders, and the ball is set back at the 20-yard line. So it'll be first and goal from there. Marauders now about 20 yards from the end zone, but still goal to go following the holding penalty. Steve Rosales pointed out correctly as I was thinking the same thing. The penalty was properly assessed. It was 10 yards, repeat first down. So the ball's now at the 20. Here is Jaden Arno working out of the shotgun. 
Three receivers split out. Here is Arno looking for the end zone. It's Logan and it's a touchdown for the Marauders. Jaden Arno to Brian Logan, the junior wide receiver for a 20 yard pass play. And the Marauders extend their lead with 8.03 to go here in the third quarter. Beautiful pass to the back of the end zone. There was a little bit of coverage there on Logan, but he's able to get free. And Jaden Arno found him. So Arno now with a rushing and a passing touchdown to his credit. And now Asa Rosemeyer, who's a perfect two for two on PATs tonight, will attempt to continue perfect and extend the Marauders lead. We got a, uh, okay, there's a penalty being called. Unsportsmanlike conduct, so now the extra point will be backed up. Forcing for a much longer uh, kick. Oh. That was a Brian Logan touchdown that was uh, caught by Adrian, uh, or fr uh, from Jaden Arno, 20 yard pass play. To make it 20 to 10, Asa Rosemeyer now has to attempt this kick all the way out uh, at the 25, and the kick's blocked. So no good, which will uh, keep the score at Belmont 20, Winchester 10 with 8.03 to go here in the third quarter as the teams will make their way back upfield. Again, Jaden Arno finding Brian Logan in the back of the end zone for a 20-yard touchdown pass. Arno's first to the night and fourth in his career against Winchester. And Marauders now at their biggest lead of the evening, trying to snap a three-game losing streak and also win their first game in Liberty Division play. As we said, Marauders uh, will continue playing uh, in the Liberty Division the next couple of weeks. They'll be at Lexington next week and then back home here at Harris Field two weeks from tonight, hosting the Spy Ponders of Arlington High School in what will be a night where the seniors will be honored prior to the start of the game. It's the final uh, home game. Actually, will uh, it could be possibly the last game played here at Harris Field for various reasons. As many of you probably already know, the Thanksgiving Day game this year between Belmont and Watertown, which could be the 100th all-time matchup, depending on which website you read or which uh, archive you look at as the Sachems return this kick and have some pretty good position to boot. But uh, if you're not aware, of course, uh, I'm sure most of you already are aware, but the uh, Belmont-Watertown Thanksgiving Day matchup this year, scheduled for Harrisfield originally, will instead be played at Fenway Park, and it will be played on the day before Thanksgiving, the Wednesday afternoon prior to Turkey Day. Belmont and Watertown, uh, one of, I believe, five games that will be played, five high school football games played during the Thanksgiving holiday at Fenway Park. It's first and 10 for Winchester, now down 10 points, two scores. Balls at their own 40-yard line. Centarelli back at quarterback for Winchester. He'll take, uh, he'll keep it himself. A little first down, oh no, check that. I thought it was 10, and not 16. Uh, Stephen Hong, number five, making the tackle for the Marauders. Let me double check that. I thought that was 16 in a quarterback, but let me, uh, no, it is 16. It is Centarelli in a quarterback. Uh, Wally Dombowski has been switching up his QBs tonight. Number 10 is Harry Lowenstein. Number 16, Jack Centarelli. They are both juniors. Lowenstein was the uh, full-time quarterback last year after Centarelli uh, injured his elbow, but he is back this season and playing. And uh, Dembowski uh, splitting time between them tonight. Cinterelli has their only uh, touchdown of the evening on a touchdown run down by the goal line. Second and short, and that'll be close to a first down by Ryan Doucette. But he did not make it to the first down marker. It's going to bring up third down and about a yard, maybe a little bit less. We'll call it third and less than a yard with Winchester needing... Probably about a foot and a half for the first down. 
Clock continues to run, 6.40, 6.39 to go third quarter. Belmont 20 and Winchester 10 on BHS Sports TV's coverage of Belmont Marauders football here from Harris Field at Belmont High School. Todd Bloniars and videographer Peter Jahl bringing you all of the uh, sights and sounds of Middlesex League Liberty Division action between these two longtime rivals. And here is Cinturelli calling his own number again, and he will get the first down just across midfield into Belmont territory. First down for Winchester. On the run from junior QB, Jack Centarelli. Ball spotted at the Belmont 49-yard line. As we said, there's been three lead changes in this game. Winchester scored first on a short field goal, relatively short field goal, 23 yards by Kieran Core in the first quarter. Red and black at Winchester led 3-0 after the first, then Belmont scoring a couple of uh, second quarter touchdowns. The first through a scrum, we believe Adrian Garung got credit for that touchdown. And then after the Marauders fell behind 10-7 after Cinderella scored, it was Jaden Arno calling his own number for a rushing touchdown. Belmont led 14-10 at halftime and they've added to the lead here in the third quarter on the 20 yard touchdown pass from Arno to Brian Logan. Cinderella again keeping it himself uh, after the picking up four on first down. It's second and six for Winchester at the Belmont 46 yard line. Again, if history is any indicator, last three times these teams played at Harris Field, each game was decided by a touchdown or less, so I would expect Winchester's gonna come back in this game despite trailing by 10. Here's a little double reverse and coming around the other way, and that is uh, Ben Wilson, and he's gonna have a first down, and there was a late flag thrown Typically, that would be sort of uh, an illegal hit out of bounds, or uh, let's see, probably going to be against Belmont here. Flag was thrown in that general vicinity is where you would expect to see that kind of play as Wilson was heading for uh, the sideline right next to the Winchester bench. Should be, a, uh, I think, a 15-yarder. Let's see. As they begin to walk off the penalty, and it does look like they're going to walk off 15 yards. Belmont has uh, been hurting themselves with penalties tonight. Uh, and now the ball sits at the Belmont 20. Winchester's uh, lone touchdown in this game so far came on a drive where Belmont was flagged for three penalties, including a 15-yard personal foul. Similar in nature to the, uh, to the one we just saw there, although uh, that play, we didn't necessarily know what the personal foul was. This time was a little bit more apparent as Ryan Doucette takes the first down handoff and he'll pick up a couple. Second down for Winchester at the Belmont 18-yard line. Head coach Brian McRae, uh, along with the defensive coordinator Dan Mullen, trying to uh, signal in the defensive plays here for the Marauders. Cinderella this time is back in the shotgun. He'll keep it himself once again as he's done quite a bit in this third quarter and on this drive. He'll get close to the first down marker, but I believe he's still a couple of yards short. And in fact, he is. It'll be third down coming up. And let's see if the Belmont defense can uh, make another big stop. Marauder defense did have a, a big goal line stop. And oh, it's a quick snap. Well, look at that. They went right up to the huddle, snapped it quickly. And Cincerelli gets the first down. So he caught the Belmont defense napping a little bit there. Oh, now there's a flag thrown. Wait a minute. Well, let's see what's going on here. Once again, Coach Brian McCray has his arms up asking what's going on. Officials will have another conference. We'll wait to see what the call will be this time. It was kind of thrown after the play had ended, so I don't know 
Uh, well, another conference by these officials. I believe that's 12 men on the field against uh, Belmont. Which is why they snapped the ball quickly. Cinterelli probably noticed that the Marauders had 12 men on the field, and that's why he went to the quick snap. Smart play by the junior signal caller for Winchester, and uh, he picked up the first down anyway. But now they'll mark the ball uh, all the way down to the Belmont five. First and goal. Actually, they're spotting at the three. Well, it's inside the five. First and goal. Cinterelli will roll out far side and not get much. He swarmed upon there. Several Marauder defenders into make the stop. It'll bring up second and goal. Again, we're glad you could join us tonight for our live coverage. Our live, we are live streaming on belmontmedia.org slash infotv and also on the Belmont Media YouTube channel. And, of course, locally here in Belmont, we are broadcasting on Comcast Channel 96 and Verizon Channels 30 and 2130. That latter channel is broadcasting in high definition where you can see some great quality video courtesy of Peter Jahl, who's running our camera tonight. Here is, a uh, again, a keeper for Centarelli. He's close to the goal line, and he's in the end zone. Jack Centarelli, the junior quarterback for Winchester, has scored his second rushing touchdown of the night, and that closes the Belmont lead down to 20-16 to with 2.09 to go here in the third quarter. Three-yard touchdown run by Centarelli, who has run for both of Winchester's TDs this evening. Now, junior Kieran Kaur, who Coach Dombowski believes is going to be uh, looked at perhaps by some Division I schools. He says that Kaur is the real thing when it comes to kicking. Has seen Kaur make field goals from 50 yards out or in that range. Again, very unusual for a high school kicker, especially here in the Northeast. But uh, perhaps Kaur uh, might have himself a, a college uh, career kicking for a D1 program. And, of course, at that point, if you perform well enough, then uh, who knows? The NFL might come a-calling. Kieran Kors listed on the Winchester roster at 6'2", 180. Now they threw a flag there. I saw movement on the line. Uh, looked like one of the Marauders jumped, but uh, let's see. It's on Belmont. They're moving the ball in a little bit closer, and that'll just make the job even easier for Kieran Kors, who... Uh, Already has a 23-yard field goal tonight, and, uh, well, this is interesting. It is, oh. All right, well, we again have some confusion here because this is a, uh, well, this was an extra point attempt. They called a penalty on the Marauders. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this should still be the extra point attempt or two-point conversion attempt. It should not be second down. Are they taking the touchdown off the board? Well, there's tons of confusion here because if there's a two-point try, why does it say second down on the dial a down marker? Okay, anyway, here is Centarelli. He goes for the goal line. He doesn't make it. All right. Now, okay, again, I okay, here's the other question I have. Aside from the fact there was some confusion as to what down it was, when the penalty was assessed on Belmont, I understand that the extra point moved closer, but here's the part I don't get. The score was Belmont 20, Winchester 16. If Kieran Kaur, who's pretty much automatic for Winchester uh, at the place kicker spot, if he kicks the extra point, it's a three-point game meaning that you only trail by a field goal and you have a very good kicker on your side if you're Coach Wally Dombowski of Winchester. By going for the two and not making it, it is now a four-point game, and so now Winchester would need to score a touchdown to take the lead. So I'm not really sure what Coach Dombowski was thinking there. As they like to say, it's always a little early to chase points. Now, had the Marauders made their extra point, 
following their third quarter touchdown, and it was 21-10, then it makes all the sense in the world for Winchester there to you know go for a two-point conversion after you know taking advantage of the penalty. But otherwise, well, wait a minute. Okay, they're calling another touchback on Austin Lasseter, who that time, I okay, there were no knees touch on the ground, so I don't know. Again, I don't like to make these sort of commentaries, but I, I strongly hope that uh, the MIAA officials committee and the folks who review the officials take a good look at tonight's video because I have been confused as heck as to what some of the calls have been here tonight. And I believe Coach McCray is about as exasperated as you can be over on the Belmont sideline because every time I look down there, I see his arms up in the air looking for some sort of explanation from the officials and in most cases not getting it. Anyway, Belmont has it first and 10 at their 20. Arno, Rodgers are up by four. Pass goes to Hubbard over in the flat. Hubbard will be close to the first down marker. For a gain of about eight or nine to Bryce Hubbard. Rodder Jr. wide out. Our, both Arno and Hubbard will be back next year. Gain of nine, second and one for Belmont at their own 29. Arno will hand it off to Adrian Garung. Garung will have the first down, and he'll have a little bit more, and Garung still going, and he's across the 45, up to the 47-yard line. Good for Marauder, first down. Strong running here to the near side by Adrian Garung. Again, I'm still wondering why Coach Wally Dombowski elected after the Belmont penalty, still to try for a two-point conversion. I, and I know he was closer, but again, if you miss the conversion, which they did, easy to say in hindsight, passing the flat to Cogliano, and he will uh, perhaps lose a yard there. One of the few times that an Arno to Cogliano connection has not resulted in positive yardage for the Marauders. I mean, on that, uh, on that penalty on Belmont when uh, Winchester elected to take the, uh, a after Belmont was called for offside, it was half the distance, and Winchester had the ball, I think, about the two and a half, three yard line. Decided instead, well, that's where you would line up for a two point conversion, so they went for the two. But again, the gamble you run there, you know, when you're down, we're in the closing seconds now of the third quarter, and I know there's still a whole quarter left to play, but. You just wonder if that's going to come back and Wally Dombowski's going to regret that decision later on. Arno staying alive and finally taken down by number 59 of Winchester. That's Liam Poole, a senior linebacker, on the final play of the third quarter. And it's going to be third and long when we come back and the team switch sides. We're actually not going to come back. We're here all the time. Uh, we're, we're not going anywhere, but these teams are going to flip around and uh, we'll get ready to start the last 12 minutes of things. Your score after three quarters of play here from Harris Field in Belmont. Belmont Marauders 20 and Winchester Red and Black 16 here on BHS Sports TV. Again, we welcome you to our broadcast tonight from the Belmont, uh, from Harris Field, courtesy of the Belmont Media Center. My name is Todd Bloniars, and our videographer this evening, Peter Jaw, filling in for Jeremy Meserve this evening. We're glad to have Peter here tonight, uh, getting some excellent uh, video for us on our live stream. And, of course, on the uh, archived broadcast, if you happen to be watching this game later in time. Again, we got 12 minutes to go now. We're ready to start the final quarter of play. Marauders looking to snap a three-game losing streak, win their first game in Liberty Division play. They are going to have a big third down and 24 as we get ready to start this fourth quarter after uh, Liam Poole took down quarterback Jaden Arno for a big loss, biggest defensive play Winchester's had in this game.
Belmont Marching Band here at Belmont High School. As always, doing a fine job. Giving us a little bit of that B.J. Thomas classic, Hooked on a Feeling. Of course, you might be familiar with the blue suede version as well from the 1970s. That gave us Uga Chaka, Uga Chaka. I noticed that nobody in the Belmont band, uh, they don't have anyone designated to give us an Uga Chaka. Meanwhile, third and very long, long pass downfield from Arno, and it's caught! First down to Brian Logan! What a pass by Jaden Arno! Logan in single man coverage, down the far sideline, and he gets a first down into Winchester territory. Marauders converting on a third and 24. Picking up over 30 yards on the connection from Arno to Logan. First and 10, Belmont at the Winchester 32 yard line. Here in the opening minute of the fourth quarter, the Marauders leading 20 to 16. Jaden Arno is having a quite an evening. He's rushed for a touchdown, he's passed for another. He has made some good throws and he's had some very impressive runs to boot. Arno in the shotgun. This time he hands off to Garung. Adrian Garung stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Among the tacklers in there, uh, number 56, Tucker Martin. Bring up second down and they're actually gonna say Garung lost a yard or two. We'll say one, second and 11. Clock running here in the fourth quarter. And the Marauders clinging to a four point lead. And again, the strategy by Wally Dombowski after uh, Winchester cut the Belmont lead from 20 to 10 to 20 to 16. Belmont got called for a penalty on the uh, extra point attempt. So Dombowski pulled his sure as anything kicker, Kieran Kaur off the field, decided to go for a two point conversion that Centarelli could not convert on the running attempt, thus keeping this at a four point game, meaning that Winchester needs a touchdown to take the lead. Rodgers would like to make it even harder for Winchester by cashing in on this offensive series and uh, increasing the lead. Arno looks complete to Logan! First down Marauders! Still on his feet, Logan all the way down inside the Winchester 15 yard line. Boy, the Marauders have some good, tall receivers. Senior captain Chris Cogliano goes 6'3". Junior wideout Brian Logan listed on the roster at 6'5". Some great targets for Arno to throw to. I mean, having receivers that tall, you can throw the ball up high and they can reach up to it because both Cogliano and uh, Logan not only are tall in height, but they have very long arms, so they have that just extended wingspan that allows them to also, on a ball that's thrown a little high, they can reach up there and grab it. Two big catches on this drive for Brian Logan, who's currently lined up here to the near side. Arno in the shotgun on first down. Looks to the end zone, and that ball was, I think, batted at the line of scrimmage. It's gonna fall incomplete. And Jaden will come over to the sideline and talk to Coach McCray. It's a second and 10 at the Winchester 13 yard line. Nine minutes and five seconds to go here in the fourth quarter as the clock stopped following the incomplete pass. Again, Marauders looking to improve to two and three on the season and win their first game in a Middlesex League Liberty Division play. Also try to win for the second straight season against the red and black of Winchester. Second and 10. Garung will take the handoff. Oh, he's got a hole. Cuts back to the middle, and he scores! Touchdown, Marauders! Adrian Garung, a 13-yard run to pay dirt. And the Marauders increase their lead with 8.56 to go here in the fourth quarter. Belmont 26, Winchester 16. Extra point pending. Nice piece of running by the junior running back, Adrian Garung. First was running towards the far sideline, then cut back as there was some nice blocking for him. 
and he found that hole and rushed for the 13-yard touchdown. Once again, putting Belmont up by two scores. Asa Rosenmeyer to attempt the point after. The kick is blocked. Rosenmeyer now two for four on PAT attempts tonight with his last two kicks getting blocked. So the teams will head back upfield. Marauders, though, still have a 10-point lead. 26-16 with 8.56 to go here in regulation. Again, Garung for his, uh, we'll say unofficially it's his second touchdown of the night. We're going to give him credit for that first run that was, again, uh, completed through a scrum of <laughs> maroon jersey, so we're not quite sure if it was him or perhaps Asa Rosenmeyer um, who got it. I, I want to say Garung, though, so that'll be the second rushing touchdown of the night for Adrian Garung, who also had a pair of rushing touchdowns in the Marauders. Week one win against Cambridge. To date, the only win for the Marauders this season. So a good sign that every night that Adrian Garung scores a pair of touchdowns, the Marauders win the ball game. At least they hope that trend will continue here tonight. Well, I will say this. With the Marauders scoring that touchdown and increasing their lead to 10 points, suddenly the uh, decision by Wally Dombowski to go for two is not really a bad decision. And now I can almost understand why he made the decision. We'll get to that in a moment. Meanwhile, Winchester returns this. That's Will Schlesinger, number 17. He goes over, uh, returning it to the far side. And let's see where they're going to spot this. Ball is going to be just outside. They're going to spot at the 36-yard uh, line of Winchester. First and 10 for the red and black at their own 36, down by 10 with 8.45 to go. All right, I think I understand now why Wally Dombowski did what he did. I think Coach Dombowski was anticipating that the Marauders might get another touchdown and perhaps could miss the extra point. Nothing's an automatic when uh, Asa Rosemeyer appears to be filling in as a kicker and punter tonight. Doesn't seem to have quite the experience uh, kicking the ball that Austin Lasseter does. There's a long pass downfield incomplete with Ben Wilson, the intended receiver. But here's the thing. Had Winchester, after the Marauders got penalized on the point after attempt, had Winchester converted and got on the two-point conversion on their touchdown earlier, the score right now would be 26-18. to 18. It would be an eight-point game meaning that Winchester would only be down one score, needing a touchdown and a two-pointer to tie the game. So now in hindsight, I guess Coach Dombowski, he had me scratching my head earlier, you know, kind of the whole chasing the points thing, but that must have been what he was thinking. There's a throw and oh! Ball dropped on the far sideline by Will Schlesinger, who had no one in front of him. If he holds on to that ball, it's six points for the red and black. Harry Lowenstein is back in at quarterback for Winchester, and he threw that ball over to the far sideline. It was a little bit behind Schlesinger, who had to kind of twist himself around, but had he been able to pull that in, he had beaten the Belmont defense, and there was nobody in front of him. It was just wide open real estate between Schlesinger and the end zone, and it would have been a Winchester touchdown. Instead, it's third and 10. That might be a big play. Here's a pass again to the far sideline. It is caught, and I think it's Wilson over there, and he's got a first down. Advancing the ball up to the Winchester 47-yard line. Clock continues to run, 826. Actually, the clock stops momentarily, I should say. 826 to go. Actually, I guess uh, they'll say Wilson went out of bounds, so... First and 10, Lowenstein throws uh, far side. It'll be incomplete, looking for Ryan Doucette in the flat. I think it's the first time tonight either of the Winchester quarterbacks has tried to attempt a pass to Doucette, who's been uh, Winchester's leading running back this evening. But we haven't seen too many uh, pass plays go his way. That might be the first one. It's the first time I can recall, anyway. So it'll be second and 10. Winchester right now down by 10. But I can understand now the, the, the reason why you, you went for two on the earlier play as opposed for one. 
That pass is caught, and here's Costello in the open field, trying to beat a defender, and he will go out of bounds at like the one yard line. Lowenstein to Jack Costello, senior wide receiver, and he got pushed out of bounds down at the one yard line. Well, I can tell you something right now. If Winchester, and it feels like it's pretty inevitable from the first to goal at the one that they're going to get a touchdown here. I can tell you right now, there's no doubt in my mind Wally Dombowski's going to have Kieran Cork kick the extra point following this touchdown. Whether Belmont gets assessed, called for a penalty or not. Lowenstein, hands off to Doucette. Doucette near the goal line. He's knocked. No, oh, they're saying he's in. Officials put up their arms. Touchdown. Ryan Doucette, a one-yard touchdown run with 8.03 to go here in the fourth quarter. And it's now a, a four-point game. And the extra point pending. Almost an automatic for Kieran Corr, the Winchester kicker. So that happened quickly. Garung, Adrian Garung had scored with 8.56 to go in this quarter, and there's now 8.03 to go in this quarter. So that touchdown drive of over 60 yards took all of 53 seconds. Karen's, Karen Kaur's extra point is a no-doubter. And so now, with 8.03 to go here in the fourth quarter, and or regulation time, however you want to look at it, it is now Belmont 26 and Winchester 23. As we said, the previous three times these two teams have played here at Harris Field, the margin of victory has been seven points or less. Marauders have won two of those three games. Six years ago, Ben Jones had a career night running for 207 yards and three touchdowns, including the game winner in the final minute, giving the Marauders a, an exciting 28-21 game win. It was a game we called for you here on BHS Sports TV. Four years ago, Marauders winning again. I think it was on a late field goal. Winning at 17-14. And then two years ago, or more like a year and a half ago, Winchester won 7-0. That ball is fumbled, and it is recovered by Winchester. The ball bounced off the return man, and the red and black of Winchester are definitely in business now, recovering that ball inside the Belmont 15-yard line. What an untimely turnover that was. I believe that's the first turnover of the ball game by either team. And they spot the ball at the Belmont 12, first and 10 for Winchester. Well, boy, these kickoff returns uh, for Belmont seem to have been an adventure, although not for the reason we just saw in that last return. Prior to that, it looked like Austin Lasseter twice tried to return the ball to the end zone, and twice the official said, touchback. This time... The ball bounced off. I think that was Lasseter. It could have been Miles Torres. They, they've had a couple return men back there. It bounced off uh, the return man and then wound up in the hands of Winchester. So Cincerelli's back at quarterback now. From the 12, he's going to call his own number. Goes up the middle and gets to about the maybe the five or six yard line. Picks up about half the yardage on his way to the end zone. Again, Winchester can uh, get a first down without scoring because uh, they uh, if they get the ball inside the two-yard line, they'll pick up a first without having to score a touchdown. But what a turn of events. Marauders twice have had 10-point leads in this game. And now, as a result of the, uh, the, the costly turnover on the return, the fumbled... Kickoff, here's, here's Cincerelli. He's looking for the end zone. He fires. It's income, almost picked off in the back of the end zone. Adrian Garun dove for that. I thought the ball was just going to drop harmlessly, but Garun <laughs> almost had a chance, I think, at a pick there. Third down and four for Winchester. 
at the Belmont six. So again, Winchester needing four yards for a first down, six yards for a go-ahead touchdown as there is 7.07 to go here in the fourth quarter. The quarterback is Jackson Torelli. The running back is Ryan Doucette. Schlesinger is split here to the near side. Ben Wilson split on the far side. He's wide. And now it's the other quarterback that comes in motion. They throw the ball. It's going to be a touchdown for Winchester. Jack Costello, who I think was lined up in a tight end spot, and I think the emotion man might have caught, uh, might have thrown the Belmont defenders off. And it turns into a six-yard touchdown pass from Jack Cinterelli to Jack Costello. Hi, Jack. Kind of feels like that's what Winchester did right now to the Belmont lead. They hijacked it. And here's Kieran Kaur trying to make this a four-point game, and he does, splitting the uprights with ease. 7 one to go here in the fourth quarter in which we have seen three touchdowns scored in less than two minutes of play. The last two coming from the red and black of Winchester High School. And with that, they now lead it 30 to 26. Well, you, again, can't help but say, again, this game has <laughs> come to us as advertised. You expected it was gonna be a close back and forth game between, between two evenly matched teams. It was almost shocking when the Marauders twice took 10 point leads here in the second half, multiple score leads. But Winchester has come all the way back, scoring the last 14 points to now lead 30 to 26. That kickoff's gonna go through the end zone. That time it was Adrian Garung back on the return. It might have been Garung on, again, it happened so fast on that last return, I wasn't sure who the ball bounced off of, if it was Garung or it was Austin Lassiter. Uh, those have been the two Belmont players back most of the time. But again, Winchester taking advantage of the Belmont uh, turnover, the first turnover of this game by either team. And they were able to convert on a, uh, what's a 12-yard scoring drive for the Red and Black. And they have taken the lead for the first time since they led 10-7 to back in the second quarter. So we have 7.01 to go here in the fourth quarter. Marauders now trailing by four. Needing a touchdown to retake the lead. Here's Jaden Arno in the shotgun. He'll hand off to Garung. And Garung comes to the near side. Strong running by the junior running back. And he will get knocked out of bounds, but not before he picks up a Marauder first down. Gain of 12 yards for Adrian Garung. Again, still plenty of time in this game for Belmont. In fact, maybe ideally Coach McRae would just like to hold the ball for these final seven minutes and run out the clock with a game-winning touchdown, similar to that 2016 win by the Marauders. Here's Garung, and on first down this time he gets stuffed. No pickup. 55 Parker uh, knocked Gall uh, among a couple of uh, Winchester defenders in on the stop. As so we approach six and a half minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. It's going to be second down. That was a loss of close to four yards. So uh, they're calling it second and 13 on the clock. So we'll, we'll go with that. Ball spotted on the Belmont 29. Logan is split to the near side. Here's Arno back to throw. He's looking near side. Fires. It's caught by Logan. Logan is immediately knocked out of bounds around the 36-yard line. 
which is going to bring up third down and about, uh, we'll call it a six. Belmont needs to get to their own 42 to get a first down here as we're now under six minutes to go. Clock is not yet a factor, but it might start becoming one, and Marauders still have some timeouts remaining. Again, Marauders trail by four. They need a touchdown, which they might have gone for anyway. Uh, again, uh, Asa Rosenmeyer has been kicking tonight, and he is uh, two for four on PATs, but uh, with uh, the last two attempts getting blocked at the line. So third down, Arno's back to throw. Fires, and it is... Incomplete, broken up, was intended for uh, Bryce Hubbard, number 83, right at midfield. He had first down yardage, but there was also some, some tough coverage down there. And now, a big decision for Brian McRae with 5.50 to go here in regulation, trailing by four, and the Marauders facing a fourth and six. The offense seems to be staying out on the field, so I would say uh, not a huge surprise here that Coach McRae is going for it. So this might very well be your ball game. Fourth and six for Belmont, needing to get to their own 42 to extend this drive and perhaps keep the game going. Arno's got time, he throws over the middle, it's caught, and it is a first down. Brian Logan, who's had several big catches this half, gets up to the Belmont 45 yard line. A clutch pass from Jaden Arno. Him and Logan have been very successful in this second half as the wind begins to pick up a little bit here. Logan is split here to the near side. Once again, Jaden Arno in the shotgun. 5-16, 5-15, clock running. First and 10, Arno's looking deep downfield. It is... Incomplete intended for Chris Cogliano, who got himself turned around. I think Cogliano was looking for that ball to go over his uh, left shoulder, then had to kind of peel around. The throw was heading to the right side, and by the time he twisted around, could not come up with the grab. It'll be second down. Clock stops with 5.09 to go. Again, we welcome you to BHS Sports TV's live coverage of Belmont Marauder football. If you have just joined us, where the heck have you been? We have had a great back and forth ball game with Winchester taking a lead here in the fourth quarter after the Marauders led by as many as 10. 14 unanswered. Winchester points have given the red and black a four point lead with 5.09 to go. Marauders facing a second and 10. Arno hands off to Garung. Garung looking to break free. He breaks one tackle, but he can't break a second. And it's a gain of about a yard is going to bring up third and nine in what appears to be four down territory from here on out as the Marauders have already converted one fourth down on this drive. Oh, okay, there was a fumble. It was recovered by Brian Logan who advanced the ball to midfield, so the Marauders catch a little break there on the Garung fumble because Brian Logan was in the area. He recovered the ball and he managed to Run the ball up to midfield. So now a third and nine is instead of third and about five. Perhaps a little more than five. Again, clock continues to run. 438, 437. Tick, tick, tick. And the Marauders have now gotten the ball to midfield. Arno remains in the shotgun. Four receivers, two split to each side. Arno's going to call his own number. Roll out to the right. Now he's going to throw it. And the pass is incomplete. So for the second time on this drive, the Marauders facing fourth down. First one was a fourth and six that Arno converted on a pass to Brian Logan. This time it'll be fourth and five. Marauders need to get to the 45 yard line of Winchester to extend this drive and uh, perhaps keep their hopes alive of coming back to win this ball game. Marauders trail 30 to 26, 420 to go. Can the Marauders extend end this ball game for themselves and convert their second fourth down on the drive. Arno's in the shotgun, Garung to his left. Two receivers split to each side. 
Arno's looking, there's a little pressure, he's gonna have to roll out, now he's gonna have to fire, throws it in the air, and the pass is broken up and complete, it was in Cogliano's hands for a moment, and Will Schlesinger converged at the last moment to knock the ball away. Winchester takes over on downs with 4.09 to go. And I don't think that that was exactly the play that Brian McRae drew up. And certainly not the uh, play that I think Jaden Arno was intending, but there was some pressure by Winchester's defense that forced Arnold to roll out, and then he kind of had to stop and throw kind of against his body to the middle of the field, almost kind of having that look of sort of a Hail Mary-ish type of pass. Cogliano was there, he had his hands on it, but Schlesinger converged, and before Cogliano could make a clean grab of the ball, Schlesinger knocked the ball loose, and it's first and 10 Winchester now at midfield. Marauders will have to start using their timeouts and they need to make a defensive stop for sure as Centarelli on the first down carry picks up about three. Belmont takes a timeout. I'm not sure exactly how many they have left. But they take one here with 4.02 to go. Again, we are happy you could join us on BHS Sports TV's coverage of Marauder football. Alongside videographer Peter Jaw, my name is Todd Boloniars, and Marauders trying to snap a three-game losing streak, win their second game of the season and their first game in Middlesex League Liberty Division play. And much like the uh, prior three meetings between Belmont and Winchester here on Harris Field, this game appears that it's going to again be decided by less than a touchdown or a touchdown. So we said the last six meetings between these teams, they've uh, each won three games, so we could call this the, the rubber game of a best of seven, I suppose. But again, the games have been much closer here at Harris Field than they've been at Winchester. Belmont High Marching Band. So good, so good, so good. Give us a little sweet Caroline, and certainly the so good, so good part uh, is certainly what the uh, the fans here at Belmont are hoping from their Marauders. We have four minutes and two seconds remaining. Here in the uh, fourth quarter, Marauders trailing by four, and it's Winchester with the ball trying to run out the clock. And here's the second down carry, and... The scrum's still up. They haven't blown a whistle yet. Finally, the officials blow a whistle. That run will be short of the first down, and I believe the Marauders will take another timeout, which they had in their pocket. We have 3.50 to go. It's third down. Marauders are going to have to make a stop on defense here if they want to have a chance to come back and win this ball game. And I don't know, I have to think with the Marauders using timeouts on each of those last two plays that they cannot have enough timeouts left that uh, essentially if Winchester gets a first down here, I think they're going to be able to run the clock out. Ball spotted at the 43-yard line of Belmont. Winchester facing a third and three. They need to get to the Belmont 40 to basically win the ball game because I do believe with... One more first down for Winchester that uh, Belmont does not have enough timeouts to be able to stop the clock and get the ball back. So Marauder defense now needs to make the two biggest plays of their life. Or at least make one big play and maybe force uh, Coach Wally Dombowski into a fourth down where they may try to just punt the ball and pin the Marauders deep. 3.50 to go. Can, the Marauders made a great goal line stop uh, early in the first half that kept uh, Winchester from uh, scoring a touchdown when they passed on what would have been a chip shot field goal. And there's a big play defensively by the Marauders. Number seven, Isaiah Zarsvalone takes down Jack Cinterelli. Marauders dialing up a defensive play when they needed it the most. Big sack. Sends Winchester all the way back to the Belmont 49. It's fourth and nine, and now they're going to have to kick. 
And although the Marauders may not have any timeouts left, they're going to have the ball with uh, over three minutes remaining and trailing by four. Kieran Kaur, first time we've seen him out on the field to punt tonight. We know what a good place kicker he is, but here he is now in punt formation. And I expect he'll boom this one. He does. Marauders will let this roll and... Oh, let's see. Is the official spotting that at the... No. Oh, my goodness. I thought the Winchester player was in the end zone when he tried to down that ball. And the official is spotting the ball inside Belmont's one-yard line. I mean, he was right down there. I mean, it certainly looked like from this angle that the Winchester player may have had part of his body in the end zone when he tried to down that. But they're saying no. Oh, I don't want to bring up the officials again. Todd, do not bring up the officials again. Okay, I won't. 2.49 to go. I apologize to our listeners out there and to friends of football officials too. Believe me, my frustration's not on all of you. Just, just, just uh, what's working at Harris Field tonight. <laughs> oh my goodness, uh, it's been a strange night here. What, a, what a ball game! And I, again, you just don't. I don't want to see a game like this so evenly matched between two, you know, evenly matched teams. I don't want to see a game like this be decided by the officials. You just want it to be decided on the field. Belmont now. Having to go, they need 99 and a half yards for a game-winning touchdown. Adrian Garung will try to get it started and uh, thankfully gives the Marauders some breathing, breathing room as he's across the five-yard line up close to the 10. But the Marauders now have to be careful about the clock and they're going to have to start moving the ball up with a, a little more uh, urgency and uh, swiftness. 228, 227. Uh... I don't think long huddles can, okay, Marauders are line. okay, here we go. I thought they were trying to huddle for a moment, but there is no time for huddling. Clock continues to run, 2.15, 2.14. It is second and two. They're going to give Garung eight yards on that uh, first down rung. Arno in the shotgun. He throws, it's caught by Cogliano. Trying to break a tackle, he does. And Cogliano's got the first down up to the 30-yard line. Chris Cogliano trying to atone for not being able to make that fourth down grab, not being able to secure it before Will Schlesinger knocked it away in what Winchester might have thought was a game-clinching play, but the Marauder defense held and has given Jaden Arno and the offense one last chance. Belmont now first and 10 at their own 30. A minute 48 to go. Flags fly right at the line of scrimmage. I would guess it's a false start unless Winchester jumped offside. Well, they did. It's gonna be five yards against Winchester. So first and 10 becomes first and five. More importantly, the Marauders are now five yards closer to the Winchester end zone. The ball now at the Belmont 35. A minute 38 to go. I don't know if they're gonna have to add some time back to the clock. No, the clock, the clock keeps running. Okay, why is, okay, well I think the, I guess the officials started the clock back up. So here we go, 126, 125. Marauders need to move quickly here. I don't believe they have any timeouts remaining. A long snap count and now Arno finally gets the snap out of the shotgun. He's looking deep down the field for Cogliano again. And it is incomplete, broken up. In coverage was Jack Centarelli, whose number we've called quite a bit for Winchester tonight on offense, but uh, he also uh, doubles as a defensive back and he was there in coverage on Cogliano. I think there might've been some safety help there as well. It's now second and five from the Belmont 35. More importantly, one minute and 10 seconds remaining. Belmont trails 30 to 26. They need to score a touchdown. And right now they are 65 yards away from the end zone with 70 ticks left on the clock here in regulation. Arno once again out of the shotgun. There's pressure coming from the blind side. And Arno's gonna get sacked. Fifty-five, Parker and Agatol again. And now the Marauders take a timeout. Apparently they still had one left in their pocket and they're gonna use it here with 54 seconds to go. So that sack is gonna make it third down and 10. It's a loss of five. Third and 10 back at the Belmont 30. But again, it's, 
Uh, I mean, the downs are important here to some degree, but right now Belmont is 70 yards from the end zone. They need to score a touchdown, and there's only 54 seconds left on the clock. Uh, well, we told you this was going to be an exciting game from Harris Field, and it's lived up to the billing. Again, shout out to Bob Lasseter. He's watching us uh, way down there in Texas, where I don't think it's quite yet foliage season. <laughs> He's watching us uh, either on uh, belmontmedia.org slash info TV or possibly uh, at uh, the YouTube channel for Belmont Media. Again, we're streaming live on both uh, venues this evening. Again, if you're watching our coverage, um, you're welcome to make a donation. In fact, uh, please consider making a donation to the BMC. You can do that at belmontmedia.org slash donate. Also, volunteers are always needed, and if you are interested in volunteering for BHS Sports TV's ongoing coverage throughout this entire 2022-2023 season, you can email Julie Zestefano at access at belmontmedia.org. All right, back to the action here at Harris Field. 54 seconds left. I don't know if the Marauders have any timeouts left. That might have been their last one that they just took. Here's Arno in the shotgun. He's looking. Going to the near side, looking for Logan. It's going to be... Out of bounds, incomplete. Logan got turned around, but the ball was underthrown. He had already kind of gone past where the ball landed, not to mention the ball also landed out of bounds. Again, if we were playing on a Canadian Football League field, Logan might have had a shot. Instead, it's fourth down. Fourth and 10 for Belmont at their own 30. There are 48 seconds remaining. The Marauders need 10 yards at least to extend this ball game. And it's possible that the Marauders may have just used their last timeout earlier on this drive. So lots going on here, but the Marauders have to get to their own 40 to keep the ball game going. Fourth down, junior quarterback and co-captain Jaden Arno in the shotgun. Multiple receivers, three to the far side. Arno looking, fires across the middle. It's caught by Cogliano. First down, the game continues. Cogliano up close to the 45 yard line, just inside the 45. 40 seconds and the clock starts up again immediately as they place the ball. And now Arno will spike it to stop the clock with 34 ticks to go. It'll be second down and the Marauders are now 55 yards from the end zone where they need to get to if they want to try to win this ball game. What a game this has turned into, and it's been a wild fourth quarter. The Marauders scored the first points of the fourth quarter to go up 26 to 16. Winchester answered with 14 unanswered points. The last seven coming a courtesy of the only turnover of this game. A fumble off the uh, kickoff. Setting up Winchester for the go-ahead score. It's a difference in the ball game right now. Second and 10, Belmont with the ball at their 45. Arno in the shotgun. He'll come near side. He's got a lot of open real estate this side. He's got a first down and more, and he'll get out of bounds down around the Winchester 33-yard line. 25 seconds remaining. It's a first down for the Marauders. Now 33 yards from victory. Jaden Arno could not find a receiver, but he had a lot of open field and took full advantage of it here on the near side. Coach Brian McRae having a quick discussion with the offense here. I, well, they must have, both teams are huddling, so this must have been a timeout called. I don't know if the Marauders have any left. Maybe Wally Dombowski took a timeout here trying to settle down his defense. We've had a back and forth game. Winchester scored the first points of this game way back in the first quarter on a Kieran Core 23 yard field goal. And then the team's kind of gone back and forth in the touchdown department. Marauders led 14 10 at the half. They led 20 to 10 and 26 to 16 here in the second half. But Winchester scored the last two touchdowns to take a 30 to 26 lead. There are 25 seconds left on the clock. And right now, Belmont has it. First and 10 at the Winchester 33-yard line 
and that brings you up to date on everything that's happened here tonight. Whew. All right, you're going. Still you're going. more football to be played in the Marauders trying to snap a three game losing streak. Jaden Arno trying to dash the hopes of Winchester for the second year in a row. In the shotgun, he's back, he looks. Fires far side, looking for Cogliato. He's got it! Chris Cogliato! And he is into the end zone! Touchdown, Marauders! 15 seconds to go and no flags on the field! Jaden Arno with a beautiful throw to the far side and senior co-captain Chris Cogliato from one captain to another. Cogliato has been quiet this half, pulls it down, straddles the sideline, and he's in to the end zone. And the Marauders have taken the lead with 15 seconds to go. For those of you old enough to remember, how's that Alcola for a fantastic finish? Sorry to date myself, fans, but there you go. Asa Rosenmeyer to try for the extra point. And the kick is blocked again. That's the third straight PAT that he's had blocked. And so the score is Belmont 32, Winchester 30. Thanks to Jaden Arno's second touchdown pass of the night. It goes for 33 yards to a senior, Chris Cogliano. Scoring his first touchdown of the night. Caught the ball, headed for the sideline, then straddled the sideline after eluding a tackler and stayed in bounds and danced his way into the end zone. Oh, for a go-ahead score. What a ball game. And this is what we like to see, the game being decided on the football field, friends. 15 seconds remaining. All the Marauders need to do now is defend this kickoff return. I don't know if Winchester has any timeouts. Don't forget they have Kieran Core. Don't forget that Coach Wally Dombowski has been on the record as saying he thinks his kicker can kick one from 50 yards. I don't know if Winchester has enough time to get the ball into field goal position for Kieran Core, who could win it with a field goal. Here really the key is Belmont's got to keep Winchester from getting any kind of significant return on this kickoff. Aza Rosenmeyer, who started this game with a line drive kick that Ben Wilson returned for significant yards, leading to their first score. And now, Rosenmeyer is going to kick this out of bounds. That was very close. Rosenmeyer was trying to positional, he's trying to direction that kick so that it was going to. But the problem also being you don't want to kick it out of bounds because it's a penalty. And in fact, the uh, officials threw the flag. So now, here's the deal. Winchester gets the ball, I believe, at their own 40 because of the penalty. Or is it the 35? Let's see. Let's see where they're going to spot this. With the kickoff going out of bounds, that's a penalty on Belmont. And let's see where they're putting the ball. Oh, we're re-kicking. Sorry, it's a re-kick. Okay. So, all right. Okay, now in the NFL it goes out of bounds, then they throw a flag and they say, uh, you know, you get the ball at the 40, but here it's a re-kick. Again, forgive me, I'm a little rough on all the high school football rules, especially because they change every year. <laughs> so, right, so it's a five-yard penalty against Belmont. The good news here is that Rosemeyer will kick it again. I mean, honestly, this is probably where you just want to squib the kick downfield, just kind of just, you know, kick a knuckler. So it's hard for uh, Winchester to, to really kind of field the ball on the return and then just, you know, limit their yardage. Again, I don't know if Winchester has any timeouts here. And now the wind, a uh, gust of wind picks up and it blows the ball off the kicking tee, which means they'll have to reset it again. Oh, the drama continues here at Harris Field. I know Peter Rosenmeyer is uh, probably somewhere watching this game. And I hope you are enjoying this broadcast. I also hope but sometime this season we might get to have you join us in the broadcast booth. He's, a, he's an avid uh, BHS Sports TV volunteer. This is squib down the field. Perfect squib by Asa. It's going to be picked up 
by, I believe that's Centarelli. Centarelli's still on his feet. Centarelli's still going. Centarelli is still moving with the ball, and he will get out of bounds with four seconds to go. Where are they going to spot this? The ball is around the Belmont 30. All right, I'm going to go back to that quote from Coach Wally Dombowski of Winchester. Before the season, Coach Dombowski said that Kieran Kors, place kicker, has that kind of ability. He can comfortably make 50 yards without a problem. Well, with four seconds remaining, Kieran Kor is out on the field right now, and he's going to attempt a field goal of just under 50 yards. 40, we're gonna call this 47 yards, maybe 47 and a half to be exact. Cinturelli is the holder. For the win, the snap, the kick by Kor, it is up, it is no good, wide left, and the Marauders hold on for a 32 to 30 victory and win their second game of the season and their first in Liberty Division play. Fourth straight time here at Harris Field that Belmont and Winchester have put themselves together for a classic ball game and for the third time in those four meetings here at Harris Field, the Marauders are victorious, snapping their three game losing streak. Jaden Arno. Ran for a touchdown and passed for two, including the game winner to Chris Cogliano. A 33-yard hookup to the end zone with 15 seconds left. Marauders had to sweat out a Kieran Core field goal attempt. It had the distance, but it was wide left, and the Marauders hold on to win 32-30. to Woo, what a ball game. BHS Sports TV will continue their coverage of Marauder football in two weeks when the Marauders will be back here at Harris Field hosting the Spy Ponders of Arlington High School. Want to give big, big thanks to our videographer tonight, Peter Jaw, filling in for Jeremy Missouri. We hope to have Jeremy back in a couple of weeks. And uh, for Peter Jaw, want to thank all of you for watching. My name is Todd Bloniars. Once again, the final score from Harris Field tonight. Belmont 32, Winchester 30. Marauders improved to two and three on the season. One and one in Liberty Division play. They will head to Lexington next week and then back here in two weeks, senior night against Arlington High School. All of you have an excellent evening, and we'll see you next time on BHS Sports TV's coverage of Marauder football. Good night.